وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبصر وأحسن للفرج ومن لم يستطيف عليه بالصوم فإنه له وجاء صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم If you can put the chairs here and you will sit on, that will be good. <coughs> Sister Chair. also, just bring the chairs and sit on them. My dear respected brothers and sisters, first of all, I would like to make a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are here in connection to the nirgah of our brother and our sister Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this occasion and this ceremony a blessed one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the new couple with your rahma and your mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them lot of happiness a precious life and precious kids and children as well and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make both the families happy with this uh, nikah and this marriage my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he came as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you know that he was born there in Mecca which is nowadays a part of Saudi Arabia. At that time, the culture was a tribal culture. And tribal culture, it has its own identity, its own customs and its own culture as well. So in that culture, they were not giving any status or due right to a woman. Woman to them, just like a paper to be used and to be thrown away and a powerful and rich man he had all the right to have as many women as he wished when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came so in holy quran in so many places allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the word and that is ba'zukum min ba'zin which means that you all as human are equal to one another no creed no color no complexion are no gender that is the base of discrimination because you are human and human are equally human because they are born of one single couple Adam and Eve the ayah which I have recited that is the first ayah of Surah Nisa you cannot find any Surah in Holy Quran by the name of Surah Rijal that that is named after men but this is the surah which is named after a woman, Surah An-Nisa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, ittaqullah, be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fulfill your obligations and perform your duties. As we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given different duties to different creatures. The mountains, they have their own function. The earth, that has its own function. The heavenly bodies and the sky, it has its own function. Even a small bug or mosquito, it has an old function and that is a part of, or a juice of our ecosystem. Our life and this worldly system is based upon 
from that ecosystem. And when every creature is performing its duty properly, the life will be going on smoothly. If we are playing games with nature, or we are tempering the nature, the after effect we will face. As you know that nowadays, you are hearing a lot about global warming, where from it came. That can be because of our own doings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran in Surah Rum, Zahar al-fasadu fil barri wal bahar bima kasabat edin nas li yuziqahum ba'za allazi amilu la'allahum yarji'oon. That fasad, disturbance, disorder and mischief has overtaken the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ocean as well, bima kasabat edin nas, because of the doings of humans, that is the after effect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am causing them to taste some of the after effects of their wrongdoings. Maybe they will think about that and they will make a U-turn. So anyhow, there are two systems in this world. One is called Nizam Taqwini and the second one is called Nizam Tashri'i. Nizam Taqwini is the system of the smooth run of this world like is sun rises early in the morning from the east and it sets down in the west at evening same is the case of all other heavenly bodies same is the case of the mountains and all other creature of allah but then there is another system which is called nizam al tashri'i now nizam al taqwini that is such a thing that nobody has any hand and any power there to disturb it or to turn it to his own wishes and Nizam al-Tashri'i, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjugated this world and worldly things to us. We do exploit it in Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many ayahs. He is using a word, sakhara lakum, sakhara lakum, sakhara lakum. Allah says, sakhara lakum as samawati wal earth. I have subjugated to you the heaven and the earth. Meaning the system is based upon that and we are the beneficiaries of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have subjugated to you people the rivers and the oceans. And another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have subjugated to you the rivers and the oceans. So you may sail therein your boats and ship to grab much more provision for you through businesses in the ocean because since the very beginning, the, the major part of business is taking place in the ocean. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And Allah says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنَ And we have subjugated to you, mean for your benefit, the sun, the moon, and the stars as well. وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you whatever you need in your life. So whatever is our need, that is there in the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way is we have to search for that and to find out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُخْسُوهَا If you will start to count the favors of Allah, you cannot do it. If all the humans from all around the world, they will get together, that let's count the, count the favors of Allah and the ni'ma of Allah, they cannot do it. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complaining in the instant. Human is a big zalim and a big kafir. So big zalim in a sense that he is not practicing accordingly. And big kafir in a sense that he is not believing in Allah in the proper way. Now when all these things are subjugated to us, so what far we are? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think when I have subjugated the whole world to you, so you are useless? Your life does not have any purpose and any aim. For the set purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He made us bound to obey his commands. Where are his commands and what are his commands? So that has been brought by the messengers. And especially by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the end of that process who was sent the last and final prophet to the whole world until the day of judgment. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has given us such a system which starts from bathroom at 
it goes to international relation that was salman al farisi رضي الله تعالى عنه was rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was teaching sahaba how to go to the bathroom and to do his natural job and how to come out and to clean his self so a jew he was saying to salman al farisi رضي الله تعالى عنه there to what a messenger he is talking about bathroom job he is teaching you the bathroom way he said yes he is teaching us this but he is teaching us how to face the roman empire and the persian empire as well we are doing all these things and that is actually the kindness of the messenger that he is teaching us how to go to the bathroom but he is teaching us how to face them in the battlefield so my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam now for the set purpose allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we will follow the commandments of allah and the practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what will be the output what will be the benefit we will be having a satisfied life here in this world and a prosperous one in the hereafter and allah wants us to have both of our lives good here and also in the hereafter and that's why in prayer when we are uh, ending our prayer accomplishing the job so in the end we are making dua rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina azab annar oh allah give us good here in this world and good in the hereafter so that is called tashri' so far tashri' allah has given us a free will if you will follow the tashri' and the sharia of allah and muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are the beneficiary but if the case is other way around you will face the consequences fa may yamal misqal zarratin khairan yara wa may yamal misqal zarratin sharran yara and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us three things number one that is called tahzib ul akhlaq how to make our personality as a good one and number 2 that's called tahzib the the dire manzil how to make our family life a happy and satisfied one and the third one as siyasatul madaniya how to have our social political and economic lives political social and economic life so that is called as siyasatul madaniya prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us a perfect guidance in this regard and perfect rules so as far as the family life is concerned which is much more important as you know for sociology this family unit meant the marriage that is the first stable unit of sociology because a new new family is established and now alhamdulillah uh, insha allah they will be having kids so there will be a new community inside the walls of their house so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he came he saw the people of arabia that they are not giving any status any dignity and any respect to women so first of all he told them father to my father you are equally human a man is a human a woman is also a human that is number 1 and number 2 rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said annasu sawasiyatun ka asnan al musht that humans are equal to one another yes regardless of their color caste and whatever their status social status is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says they are equal to one another like the teeth of a comb so the comb which you are using for combing your or to shape your your hair so if the teeth are not even up and down so you will scratch your head and maybe it will become septic same is the case discrimination is scratching the society and sometimes it becomes yes not i'm saying yes so my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam anyhow rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it and number 2 prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that now when you are doing the marriage so in this regard yes islam is not putting any restrictions that a boy cannot love a girl or a girl cannot love a boy but to what extent that love should be to take them towards proper marriage contract but that marriage contract must be with the permission of their parents because this marriage is not only to fulfill your desires you are bringing a stranger to your own family and islam believe in pluralism not in individualism so now the purpose of marriage is pluralism not individualism so now if a boy and a girl they are doing their own marriage without the consent of their parent or even they call them to be sad and to be upset with and they are doing it so that is not pluralism that is actually individualism they are splitting the family 
they are destroying and disturbing the family so that's why in islam we do not approach the girl directly or the girl does not approach the boy directly but especially from the boy side his elder the parents they are approaching the parents of the girl that is a respect to be given to the girl because she is not a commodity to be used and to be thrown away must be given a due respect and now look i was asking brother ajaz that what will be about mahar even though in mahar there is no any specific amount rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in a hadith wal mahr ma tarazaya that the bridal money which is called dower so dower is ma tarazaya what they agreed upon but at least the minimum amount should be there for example 10 dollar but now how much how much it could be depend on their mutual consent if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with a lot so they can fix it at 1 million dollar or even 1 billion for example so anyhow i i asked the brother ajaz that what about i said that they will tell you so this is actually the proper culture thing and that what we are looking for because this is not a sale and purchase contract this is actually a life drive contract to establish a new family and not only a new family to connect one family to the other now they will be helping one another in their happy occasion and said occasion may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from said occasion but this is life this has happened the dunya ka se beham na bashad agar bashad bani adam na bashad in this world there is no human without worries and if somebody is without worries so it means that he is not a human a donkey can be without worries a bull can be without worries and as far as human is concerned he is a thinking creature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who thinks he will be having worries what should be this how should be this how should be this so my dear respected brother to make the the, the, the long statement uh, a little bit short but i don't want to shorten it that much why because as you know that mostly the brothers they do not have time to come to masjid and otherwise Every day we are available here and until midnight, which he knows. Until midnight, I am giving my lectures there and my gurus there. Yes, yeah. Leakar. Sometimes when he was a good guy, still he is a good guy, but he is not coming. <laughs> yes. So sometimes back he used to come to dars, but now I think that when plenty of money somebody gets, then he does not show up because he is afraid of a mood. Nasir, that whenever you will go to Mula, he will be asking for money. I am the only Mula. I am not asking never. for money. Never. Yeah, never I ask anybody for any money. They give me one dollar, or give me five dollar, or give me ten dollar. Yes, yes even for my masjid, we have fundraising only once in Ramadan. And at that time, when I give a little bit speech, so then I say, Waji knows. Then I say at that time because people then they put their hand in their pocket to bring up. I say no, just hold on, hold on. If you are giving it, your heart says that you are giving it for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, not because you are ashamed of these brothers who are sitting around. That why he is not giving anything. So he said, if you have any reservation, bring out your hand empty, and that money which you have, when you are going back, just go to Costco and buy some stuff for your for your family, and don't give it to the masjid. So my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the thing is that certain brothers. they can attend only in a kas ceremony or at janaza so that's why i prolong my speech in janaza and also in marriage because we can grab dear such like brother who are not coming that free but to us yes. yes yes and we have to give them something and we are giving it for free when you know sometime i say in my dars there in my lectures there maybe tafsir dars or hadith dars or inheritance dars or philosophy dars or logic dars or whatever so i say to the students because they are working like you people but at night they are coming until midnight they are taking classes so i tell them i don't have money otherwise you are giving time here in america back home in pakistan india and those countries for example there a student has to be obliged to his teacher that he is teaching him but i say that here the life is totally different here the teacher must be obliged to the student that he is coming to study deen 
So I am telling them, I don't have money. Otherwise, I was supposed to give you $100 per hour for every lecture. Allah. So my, if Allah will give me this, yeah, sometimes I give them, but only $5. You gave me. Yes, yeah, I give to everyone. Yeah, but if Liyakar start, I will give him as well. <laughs> yeah, so my dear, because still he needs some more money. Once upon a time. Okay, so anyhow, my dear respected brother, that sister of Islam, Rasulullah. Says, now a woman in nikah or marriage contract must be given a due respect. So what is that respect? First of all, that her parents must be approached. As the culture family, they approach the Dajaz and they approach the Dajaz family, yes, to ask for their daughter. That is the culture thing. That's what Islam says. And number two, not only that, the second thing is that even though the boy and the girl both are marrying one another, or one of them is marrying the other. See? Both of them, they are marrying one another. But to give a due respect, keeping in view, the historical background at that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the bridal money must be given by the boy to the girl. That is, this is not a price because, yes, our daughter, Ma mashallah, she is a nice girl, and she is the daughter of Ajaz. All of you, you are nice people, nice brothers and sisters. If a woman or a man, if he is a crippled one, that he cannot move, or she cannot move, still the whole world cannot be a price to that crippled human. Because human is not a saleable commodity. So this is actually symbolic as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa atun nisa sadukatihin manihla and give women their bridal money or mahar as a mark of respect. Now to give you an example, your kids are going to school or not? Say. Yes. Yes. Your kids are going to school or not? Yes. To elementary or middle or so and so on. Sometimes the teachers only to encourage them furthermore. They are giving them some awards or not? Yes. So what is award? A paper. What is award? Paper. A paper. How much will be the price of that paper? One penny or two penny? No price. No price. No, don't worry. If you are selling that, nobody will give you one penny for that paper. But how happy you are and how happy the whole family is that they are sometimes slaughtering the chickens, making a dawah for their friends, and for example, spending two, three hundred dollars for their paper. Why? Because that is symbolic. That is not for price, that is symbolic. Same is the case here. That mohar is a symbolic to give respect to the girl concerned. That is number one. And number two, Rasulullah sallallahu says that this is a contract like another contract. You are going to Costco, you are buying milk and sugar and things like like that or not? Yes. Say yes. Yeah, but you give the money. Yes. And they give the stuff. Yeah, but here that is not the case. Even though this is a contract, here you need two Muslim witnesses. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "La yasifu nikahu illa bi huzuri shahidaini aqilaini balighain." There is no room for such a nikah where there are not two Muslim witnesses to testify that. Got it? So two Muslim witnesses further dignity and respect to the contract of nikah. You got it or not it? So whatever, uh, what I recited in front of you, a few ayat, but the first ayat which I said from Surah Nisa, Be dutiful to Allah. For it taqu, mostly we say fear Allah. That fear is actually the mana lazimi. Yes. The side-by-side -side meaning of it taqu Otherwise, it taqu means protect yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I will tell you, protect yourself from highway patrol. So what it means? Don't violate the rule. <laughs> what it means? So when I say, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it means don't violate his rules. Otherwise, you will get punished. So that's why we translated it. Be dutiful to Allah. Fulfill your obligation. The one who created all of you from one single soul, Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And from him, or from that nafs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his couple. And the mufassirin and muhaddisin and fuqaha and philosophers of Islam, they are saying that actually the woman is a part of man. Because she has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the left rib of Sayyidina Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. And as you know, that on both sides we have ribs. On right side and on left side. But which side of the ribs is close to our heart? 
left side. So Rasulullah sallallahu said as narrated by Imam Bukhari that she has been created from the left rib of man Adam alayhi salatu wa salam wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa bassa minhum arijalan kathiru wa nisa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said from there one and single couple Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread it there's billions and trillions of posterities. Since this time will be going until the day of judgment. So Allah once again says Fattakullah. So fear Allah. Fear Allah. The one who was asking him, or you are asking his in his name. Because sometimes we make dua, so we say, Oh Allah, give us. And sometimes we make a request to our brother Ajaz or anybody else, so we say, For God's sake, don't do that. So Allah says, When you are presenting my name to somebody else, why you don't have fear of mine? And look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clubbed together Arham with himself that have my fear and have fear of relation. So what it means, do not disconnect your, your, your relation with someone. If you are related to someone, that is something natural. Why you are disconnecting it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, Sil man ata'aka. Connect with that relative who is trying to disconnect you. So you should loosen the rope. Not to get broken. He is trying to cut it. But you should lose it. Yes. And he is going on his back. So you should follow him. So the 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 the, the hubble or the rasi or the rope must be intact. Sulman Qataka, Wafu Amman Zalamaka. And Rasulullah sallallahu said if somebody has done wrong to you, just forgive him. Yes, Waahsin Ilaman Asa Ileka and do good to someone who has done bad to you. That's what the Muslims are, and that's how a human is. Imam Sadi, Rahmatullahi Aleyh, once he came from Shiraz to Asfahan, so he met somebody in the bazaar. He asked him, I want to stay here in Asfahan for a few days, but I want to know the nature of the people, how to live in a good way here in Asfahan. So can you tell me about the people of Asfahan, what type of nature they have? So they said, they have very good nature. He said, just explain it. He said that they do not forget the ihsan and the good of anyone. If somebody will do good to him, they want to reciprocate. They want to recompense him. So Imam Sari, he looked down and then he said, Oh, like the donkeys in Shiraz. So he said, What do you mean, Imam? He said that you can see two donkeys in hot weather. They are standing beside one another. This one is scratching his body and that one is scratching his body. So they are doing the same, good for good. That is donkey nature. So he said, but the people of Asfahan, they are very rarity. He said, what do you mean? He said, they don't forget the evil of someone, they take revenge. So Imam Saadi said, oh, like the dark of uh, Shiraz. He said, what do you mean? He said, a dark bark, the other one bark as well. This one bites, so he bites in recompense. So he said, can you tell me that what's the good quality? So he said, that neki babad dai neki kare kharanas. Good for good, that is the nature of donkeys. And bad for bad, that is the nature of dog. And good for bad, that is the nature of human. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us human. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, to make the long story short, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Muttaqullah al-lazi tasa'alun adhi wa l-arham illa Allah kana alaykum raqiba. And the hadith which I have narrated, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that ya ma'ashar al-shabab, all the youth and the young, who can afford to do marriage? So he must do that. It will control his sight and it will protect his chastity. And Rasulullah says if somebody cannot afford it economically and financially, so Rasulullah says he is a young, he has a desire. So, he should do fasting to control himself because fasting, what is the purpose of fasting? Fasting is not an entertainment. Yes, the fasting means to control yourself. I was telling the brothers in Darsa that four things are meant here. Number one, self-control. Number two, say? Self-assessment. Huh? Self-assessment. Self-assessment. Number three? Self-judgment. Huh? Self-judgment. Self-judgment. And number four? Self-accountability. Self-accountability. So if you will consider these four things, that what for Islam is self-control, self-judgment, self-assessment, self-accountability. If we will do that, Rasul Sayyidina Umar in his dars, he said, Hasibu, tabla antuhasabu. 
put yourself to accountability before that you are put by Allah to accountability. Was you know, Qabla and Tuganu, weigh yourself be, before that Allah will put you on the scale and weigh you. And there will be the loser. What the Zayanu, Lil Art and Akbar, as we are going here to court sometime, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Say Amen. So we are going there well, 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 well ready or not. Yes. Yes. We do. So Sayyidina Umar Ta'ala say what the Zayanu Lil Art and Akbar, a court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming at the day of judgment. What you have done for, for that? What is your preparation for that? So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this nikah. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the couple. Amen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless both the family. Amen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Amen. Because if somebody is joining the marriage of a brother or a sister, so it means that the family must be obliged to them and they must be thankful to them that they shared with us our, our happiness. And you must be thankful to them that they thought of us that he deserves to join and to share our happiness. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. So anyhow, now, should I ask her? Yes. What is her name? Sana Ajaz. And our brother, the groom name is? Hussein Ali Mukhtar. That is you. Yes. And what about? The Mahar, I asked him, so he said that you should ask them. Yeah. Huh? How much? It's 4,000 and um, 8,000 and uh, 8, 8 and a half thousand in gold. In gold. Yeah. So altogether 12,000 and 12 and a half thousand. Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-Kareem. Muhammad wa ali wa ashabi ajma'i. My daughter Sana Ajaz, have you, uh, and who will be the two witnesses? I said, you should come forward. The other one. Mm -hmm. So, what's your name? Faisal. Faisal. And what's your name? Hassan. Hassan. Masha Allah, beautiful names. So, anyhow, my daughter. Have you given yourself by way of Islamic nikah with the bride and four thousand in cash and eight thousand and a half in shape of gold to our brother Hussein Ali Mukhtar in the presence of our brother Faisal and our brother Hassan? You should say yes, I do. Brother Hussein Ali Mukhtar, have you accepted our daughter, Sana Aja? She is my daughter. Yes, because all those who are of that age, so they are my daughter. Those who are equal to me in age, they are my sister. Those who are older than me, they are my mother. So, anyhow, have you accepted Sana Aja, the daughter of our brother Ajaz Ahmed? by way of Islamic nikah, with the bridal money of 4,000 American dollar in cash and 8,000 and a half dollar in shape of gold in the presence of these two Muslim witnesses, Brother Faisal and Brother Hassan? Yes, I do. Once again, Sana Ajaz, have you given yourself by way of Islamic nikah with the bridal money of 4,000 American dollars in cash and 8,500 8 dollars in shape of gold in the presence of our brother Faisal and brother Hassan to our brother Hussein Ali Mukhtar? Yes, I do. Brother Hussein Ali Mukhtar, have you accepted Sana Ajaz, the daughter of Ajaz Ahmad, with the bridal money of 4,000 American dollars in cash and 8,500 dollars in shape of gold by way of Islamic nikah in the presence of our, these two witnesses, Brother Faisal and Brother Hassan? Yes, yes I do. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala jatul anbiya al-mursalim Muhammad wa ali wa ashabi al-mu'i. Allahumma bin rafai wal baneen, lam bin rafai wal baneen, lam bin rafai wal baneen. This is a dua with Sayyida Khadija, our mother, the first wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he came and uh, he
He said to Khadija that today Jibreel came to me and he informed me about something. So she said, what is that? So Rasulullah told her that the wife of Fir'aun Asi, she was a Muslim, a woman, a lady. And the mother of Isa, Sayyida Maryam, and the sister of Musa, these three will be in my nikah in Jannah. So now, as you know, that, sorry to say that, so, but that is you, will, that woman does not like a sokan. Do you know sokan? Yes. You don't know in Urdu? Yes. Two wives of the same husband are called sokan to one another. Yes? And that is actually the base of enmity. They don't like one another. Because they share the husband. So that's why they don't like. But Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu ta'ala, she said, Allah bin Rafael al-Baneen, Allah bin Rafael al-Baneen, that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a happy life with them, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you five kids, even though there are no kids in Jannah. But that was a dua. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing for a new marriage. So we are doing the same dua for the new couple, Allah bin Rafael Allah bin Rafael al Banin. And whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was salamizing in Nikah. So after Nikah, he was he used to say, Barakallahu lakuma wa barakallahu alaykuma wa jama'a bainakuma bi khair. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have his baraka on you both. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you both together with his mercy. So that is Dua Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are doing that as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them happy life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this couple a blessed couple. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with a happy life and also with nice and wise kids. Amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless both the families and make their relation a good one. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the brothers and sisters who are attending this, this ceremony, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep and make them happy also here and also in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmatihi wa rahmat